growth uh, over the weekend. Uh, right now, I want uh, to get into a month that was also part uh, of uh, the coaches that uh, were imparting knowledge in that uh, clinic that took place in Kajiado North, and it's none other than Hamisi Mohamed. Good afternoon, Hamisi. How are you doing? Uh, good afternoon. I'm doing good. Good, good to have you right here on uh, Scoreline. It, it has been a while uh, since you are here on Scoreline. Uh, welcome to Scoreline. Uh, first things first, uh, we, before we jump into the training that you are having in, uh, in, in Kajiado North, uh, 2018 is the last time that I got to host you here on Scoreline, and this is when you are going to Arsenal for a coaching clinic. So two years down the line, you know, what... Uh, how have you used what you learned in London uh, here in the country? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much because uh, I remember when I came to KTN when I was trying to get votes from the the, the, the the Kenyans and the whole world to vote for me to go to Arsenal. Uh, KTN uh, played uh, with yourself a big part of uh, that campaign. So I want to say thanks again. But uh, it has been... Uh, it has been a great uh, journey since I came back from uh, Arsenal. And uh, I have, uh, the, the most important thing for me was just to come, not to sit down with the knowledge alone, but also to share the knowledge, because that was also the target for the for Arsenal. When I come back here, I can mentor more coaches for, for us to get more quality players in the grassroots. Yes, uh, Hamisi, of course, uh, or, or through that, yesterday you were... Uh or rather, over the weekend, you were in Kajiado imparting knowledge to uh, the coaches there. I mean, how was the reception and what, what are these uh, things that you are working on, you know, implementing and making sure that Kenyan, Kenyan coaches learn now that you are part of uh, the people? Of, yeah, first of all, I want to thank uh, Football Kenya Federation because I think uh, one of their pillars that uh, when they came to the office was to make sure that at least uh, all the coaches who are, who are, who are like... Uh, uh, having a small or who are involved in the grassroots to make sure that you have it, they are all qualified. And uh, it is something that which has been going on. And uh, I was very lucky, and I would say that I'm very uh, proud because uh, I come from Kajado, that's where I was born. And to be involved in the coaching education in that area, that was a good thing for me and also for my fellow coaches because they can see that one of their own is now. Uh, instructor who is working with Federation, but uh, it has been a very, it, it was a, a very intense 10 weeks, uh, 10 days, whereby we took the coaches through practical and theorizations, and uh, we hope that now, uh, when once they go back to their teams, they will try and correct whatever they were doing wrongly, and whatever they were doing or they were doing good, they will keep on doing them, and I'm happy that all of them that now they are all qualified with uh, D license. Of course, uh, it's not only Kajiado that has benefited from this. You've been to other parts of the country. You've imparted knowledge to them. How is the how has the reception been by from uh, different coaches that you get to interact with? Uh, you know, on this coach on these uh, coaching clinics. Uh, first of all, I think when when, uh, when I meet them and uh, they they remember that uh, I was brought in the place to coach in Africa in the program uh, between Arsenal and all uh, them. For them, it, it's 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 like. Uh, a dream for them, like they, 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 they are. I, I'm, I'm giving them something that they, they have to dream of. That one day, even then, they will reach my level. And they ask a lot of questions. They want to know how Arsenal was. Uh, they want materials from Arsenal, which, which for me, I, I, I will say that all coaches just need to have knowledge. And for me, sharing knowledge with other coaches is something that is part of my life. <laughs> yes, yesterday we were having a discussion here in studio and uh, my panelists from uh, yesterday's show uh, spoke of, you know, how Kenyans don't believe, we don't believe in our own, we have to go for foreign coaches. Do you feel like it's now time that we started giving uh, a, lot, lo a, a lot of these uh, local coaches opportunities here? Yeah, I think uh, that's, that's one thing that uh, I think Federation is working on because... Uh, now we, the federation have new rules. As you know now, the, 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 the top level of football is handled by FKM. So one of the requirements is that uh, all these foreign coaches who are coming in, most of them who come here sometimes they don't have even papers. So one of the requirements that federation will do is that every coaches who come here before uh, maybe managing any club, they will have to hand over their qualifications. And uh, 
now with the, with the, with the, with the system that federation have put and the, the qualification starting with D license all the way to A license, I'm sure that in the next three years to come, most of the Kenyans will be locally who are holding who are, will be managing the top level only. Do you feel like we have an identity when it comes to coaching? Do we have an identity? Do we have something that we can identify with and say this this is our style, this is the Kenyan style? Uh, I think that's that's a good question because uh, that's one of the challenges. That one of the challenges I think we we, we need to make sure that uh, we tackle because I remember when I was in Arsenal at that time, Une Emery was the was the head coach. Yes. And uh, I, I I got to work with the academy coaches and they told me that uh, it, like it, every club they have a system. Let's say for example Arsenal when Une Emery was there when they were playing 4-3-3 and mm -hmm. they, they built they, all the all the they were starting builder from the back. Mm -hmm. They are not playing long boards. So it's it's a system whereby that it's it's in the club. Like from the academy level to the first team, everyone is playing the same way. So it's not different when uh, a player comes from academy to go to the top level. It's not hard for them or for the players to adjust the system. So I think uh, it's something I remember that uh, two years ago, I remember Federation, they were trying to work on the, on the philosophy uh, that we want to play as a country. And it's something that also is a challenge because let's say, uh, I'll just give you an example like England, a national team. You, 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 can't, have a, a, you can't have a player as, because they are playing in different clubs and they are being uh, managed by different coaches. Uh, maybe Ateta want to play from the back, uh, maybe the, the, the coach who is handling Burnley want to play long balls. Yeah, it's it's something which is not easy. But the FA itself, one, the, one, once the player come back to the national team, they have their own way of play. So it's something that it's a challenge for us as Kenyans, and it's something we need to work on. Mm -hmm. Now uh, let's move away from uh, coaching uh, side, and you have a oh, you have a tournament coming up in uh, uh, the end of November and into December. Can you uh, probably uh, tell us about it and what it entails? Yeah, so thank you so much. So we have a, a very exciting tournament coming up in December, which will start on four, that will, will end in six in the Yani Kuala, and uh, the age group will be under seven, under nine under 11, under 13, 15, and 17, for both boys and girls. And uh, we, 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 we are looking to even have teams from East Africa, but uh, because it's the first tournament and with all the pandemic, so we are maybe expecting most of the team will come from Kenya, especially in Mombasa. So it's a tournament whereby we're expecting around uh, 150 teams, which is a total of players around 2,000. And um, it, of course, I said it will be a two-day tournament, and uh, we'll be bringing scouts to from local and international to come and scout players and see the level of players, uh, uh, the level of uh, competition. But it's an opportunity. The reason why we did we did this is because we want to give opportunity for these young boys and girls to showcase their talent in our very well structured tournament. Because I remember the last time I went to a tournament in Tanzania, I will not say the area. It wasn't well. Uh, very well uh, organized because you 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 might you go to a tournament and you find that uh, they don't have enough field so you end up playing maybe less minutes or some other matches they they, they don't get uh, they, 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 they don't get to be to, to be played because of timing or maybe uh, because of the field but with the with the, with the Tiani tournament we are lucky that we have partnered with so many uh, clubs and uh, schools in Diani. And uh, we have around 50 fields whereby we'll be ho holding this tournament. So uh, somebody will want to know why, why in Kuala? Why, why did you not put, put, put this tournament in a different area of the country, but you selected Kuala? <laughs> yeah, I know. Everybody is asking about that. But uh, we want them to also to go and it's, it will be during uh, holidays, so it's in December. So we said it, uh, Kuala is a good place, good weather, there is good food, there is good hotels. So we, we said it, it's, it's a nice place, and also with the, with the, with the venues and the field, we, we, we said uh, for, because it's our first edition of this tournament, we selected to host it to, to the army because of all these facilities.
Coach, let me ask you, most of the time that we do have these tournaments, players feel like, you know, they just appear for take part in the tournament and then, you know, there's nothing after that. And we've, we've always talk, uh, spoken about developing grassroots football, but is it that these players are just coming to take part in this tournament and if not scouted, that is the end of it? Uh, we want to give these uh, kids as much as as much like we want to give them matches for them to play as many matches as, as they can mm -hmm. in that two days mm -hmm. and we are promising them we want to bring scout locally i myself you know i am uh, one of the assistant coach in the under 20 national team mm -hmm. uh, also now we will be also helping in the assisting under 17. so we'll be having scout locally and internationally we have friends who are here in kenya uh, we've already contacted them and they know that uh, this tournament will be going on in December. So we have scouts from schools in US, we have scouts from academies in UK. So it's something that we are not we are not promising that people will be scouted, but we'll bring these scouts for them to come and see themselves. So it's something that uh, will encourage parents to, to, to allow their children to come and experience uh, our, our DNA Super Cup. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, that is about uh, the Diani Super Cup. Now, as we wind up, uh, Coach, what should we expect? Of course, we are looking forward to the resumption of uh, football in the country, but what should we expect uh, from you as uh, Coach Mohamed Amisi? Uh, first of all, uh, I can't wait to go back to training because uh, it has been a while. Kids have been calling, uh, especially with my young talent super academy in, in the Bull Bull. Um, Of course, we are all fingers crossed that... Uh, we will resume training. You can see all the KPL teams. I will say most of most 95 percent of the Premier League teams they have already started training. It's only that it's not something which is in public, but teams are training. When you go to these local uh, tournaments in the village, football is being played. And now government and the ministry giving the national team opportunity now to 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 resume to to play the international friendly match. I hope that maybe next week something will work out for our team, for our beautiful game to go back. Uh, me personally, as a coach, of course, I will still work with my Young Talent Soccer Academy. Also, under 20 national team assignments uh, will be coming soon. We were to play Sudan, but we are yet to know when uh, they have rescheduled the match. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'm still here and I'm coaching and I will be willing to share my knowledge with the uh, different players, uh, different coaches from different counties. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that is uh, Hamisi Mohamed talking to us about the Diani Super Cup. And also his uh, coaching journey. Remember, he was one of the beneficiaries that, that uh, took part uh, in uh, the Arsenal coaching uh, clinic two years ago and he's, in, he's been imparting knowledge to other coaches in the country. So we take a shorter break. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the highlights from Michael Lolunga's goals yesterday in the J League. And also, we do have all the results from the UEFA Nations League matches that were played yesterday.